These two are fighting over Piglu. I mean, I don't see hope in there, but I don't know any other reason why the Piglu would be moving around. So, actually, it turns out, hope is in here. Hope, what are you doing in there? This is Visit Joan, and as you may have already figured out, no game is perfect, even The Sims. But as they make new installments in the franchise, the developers tend to build off the previous games, taking what works and fixing what doesn't. Or at least they're supposed to. But if I'm going to get into all of this with The Sims, well, we'd be here all day. The simple fact of the matter is, every once in a while you're going to run into a game feature that makes it more annoying than it is fun. and. That's a problem, because nobody plays games to annoy themselves. That's why each installment of a franchise has quality of life improvements. Now, these are little things that can be done to make the experience much more enjoyable. For example, in Pokemon Sword and Shield, if you have an unevolved Pokemon at level 100 and you give it a rare candy, it will still cause the Pokemon to evolve. An example from The Sims would be an improvement of the shopping system, where you no longer have to go to a community lot and instead, you can choose any outfit for your sim right from the dresser. And I know several people see this as, you know, degrading quality for a life simulation game, but games are supposed to be fun, and it's not fun to wait 15 minutes for a loading screen every time I want to get my sims a new outfit. As we all know, The Sims 4 isn't perfect, and although there are big things that we could do to make the game better, like better babies, better teenagers, more reactions and consequences, and things like that. There are tiny little things that can make gameplay that much more enjoyable that the developers don't have to spend a lot of time on. So in this video, I'm going to be going over 10 quality of life improvements I'd like to see in The Sims 4. As always, this is based off of my opinion, and I realize that not everybody plays the game the same way I do, and that's fine. If everybody played the same way, the community would be really boring. So there may be some things on this list that you might just not want to make a priority. That's okay. And so without any further ado, here are 10 quality of life improvements that need to happen in The Sims 4. We're going to kick off our list with things I want to see in Create a Sim. And the first thing I want to be able to do is set makeup and accessories to all outfits. Now, this is kind of a weird thing that goes on in Create a Sim because I've noticed that if you start with a Sim that, you know, was like generated from the gallery or something and you set their makeup for their everyday outfit, it will apply to all the different outfits. But that stops as soon as you hit the randomize button. And now I realize that some people like to put different makeup on every single outfit of their Sim. I get that. However, I kind of got used to the Sims 2 bottle, and I kind of don't want to spend any more time in Create a Sim than I have to. So I tend to use the same makeup for every single outfit except sleepwear. And that's where it gets annoying, because usually after I randomize a Sim and I get everything just perfect, I like the makeup, and then they go to the next outfit, and it's gone. That means I now have to find the exact same makeup I used if I wanted it to be the same. And I generally do because I generally start with the head first and work my way down because I don't want to be going back and forth between the body and the head. That's just, oh my goodness, it's bad enough for necklaces. I would like to see something that they did in The Sims 3 where I can easily hit a button and say apply this to all outfits. Then I can go to the individual outfit, like the sleepwear, and delete the makeup that I want to delete. Also, I would love to see this for accessories too, because some of it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, you don't take out your piercings if you're wearing certain outfits, especially right after you first got them. Doing this would make Create a Sim a lot more enjoyable and faster so that I can get onto actually playing the game with the Sims I've created. The next thing that needs to happen in Create a Sim is being able to link your aliens with their disguise. The way it is right now, if aliens aren't in disguise, they wander around bald with these weird outfits that nobody wears. Well, maybe they wear it on their home planet, but that's not kind of how I... I feel like a disguise would just affect the skin and eye color. And I feel like aliens, they would have hair and they would, you know, at least wear normal outfits while they're on Earth. 
And it'd just be really weird to make people think you have clothing where it isn't. That's kind of a blaring siren that something isn't right. I usually give my aliens the same exact outfit that they usually wear for their disguise. However, that's a problem because now I have to go through every outfit twice. Yes, that's right. I have to not only remember what outfit I picked, which isn't all that big of a deal because I actually have a good memory, but when it comes to shoes and stuff, it's kind of a problem. And then I have to scroll through it and find it again. And I have to do this six, seven times. That means that I spend twice as long making an alien as any other type of sim. And remember how I said I don't want to be in create a sim any longer than I have to be? Yeah, you can see the issue. I really just want to be able to create the outfit once and then link it with the disguise. And then I can go in the disguise and change other things like makeup or eye color or stuff like that. I shouldn't have to do everything twice. That's not fun. Nobody wants to do that. Now we're going to move on to build mode. Now build mode is probably one of the best things about The Sims 4, but it's not perfect. I mean, how many times? I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've created, you know, walls for the build. They're all ready to go. I've got the basic structure down. I find what seemingly is the perfect door. I put it there and it's not centered. Or it is centered when I don't want it to be centered, but it's still the same problem. And the whole reason that's an issue is because by looking at the doors in the catalog, I can't tell how many tiles they actually take up. We can already sort by other things such as packs, color, style, although nobody really knows what is considered what style. So why can't we be able to sort things by other stuff? I want to be able to sort the doors and the windows by width. I want to be able to say, okay, only show me the doors that are two tiles wide, or only show me the windows that take up one tile, stuff like that. So that I'm not screwing around while I'm building, picking five different sets of windows that I only have to edit out later. Yeah, you heard that right. This big inconvenience also ramps up the amount of time I have to spend editing speed builds because nobody wants to see me go through 50,000 windows. At least I don't. I want to know what doors I can use before I place them. It would just make recording speed builds so much easier. Another thing that we need to be able to sort by is slot size. Now, the cool thing about The Sims 4 is that we can put objects on shelves. That's a really great way to add a little bit of clutter to your home and make it look more realistic and lived in. However, that's a problem because there are different slot sizes on different surfaces and some stuff that you think would be able to go on a shelf actually won't. And once again, that's more time I spend screwing around and more time I then have to spend editing out that footage. I just want to be able to say, okay, show me everything that fits on a, a small slot and I can see what I have. I don't have to scroll through the catalog and see, okay, is this going to work or not? And also I want to know if something that I want to put on there requires me to pull out the red shelf or not. I want to know that before I begin so that I'm not wasting time in the middle of trying to clutter the dang shelf. Another thing I would like to see is be, to be able to sort by in build mode is rug size. Oh my goodness. You know, it's the same thing with the doors. I find a really good rug, the color's perfect, it looks great, but then I put it under the dining room table or the sofa or whatever, and it's not the right size. And even when I try to scale it up or scale it down, it still isn't the right size. So then it's back to the drawing board. Again, it's more time I spend in build mode and more I have to edit out that I really shouldn't need to. I want to be able to see in the catalog how big these rugs are. Are these 4x4 four four rugs? 5x6? Five something by something? I, I don't even know what kind of dimensions they are any, anymore. I, I just want to be able to see how big the rug is so I know before I even take it out if I can place it down or not. All these additional options in sorting would just make speed building so much easier and I spend less time in front of the editor trying to make my speed builds. It's already annoying enough that I can't decide which sofa I want. I don't need to be going around trying to pick doors, windows, and clutter items too. And one more thing that would make speed builds so much easier to do is having the cinematic camera in build mode. Now this is a kind of a big deal, especially when I'm doing challenge builds that I have no intention of moving anybody into at all. I still want to take screenshots with the build and with the camera that's available in build mode, 
I can't control it all that well. I can't get a good angle. And the screenshots turn out horrendous because of that. The reason they're not horrendous in my videos is because I've actually moved the family in and have access to the cinematic camera. But I really wish I could just do that in build mode. So when I build these challenge houses, I don't have to worry about whether the screenshots are going to look good or not. Speaking of the cinematic camera, another improvement I'd like to see be made with it is to be able to track your sims while you're in cinematic camera mode. There are several times I'm taking a shot when I want to move with the sim. A motion shot where they're walking down a road. Or maybe I have my sim on a jet ski, they're doing tricks, but then they have to do the trick 50 million times in order for me to figure out where to place the camera so I get a decent shot. If I could just track sims in the cinematic camera, none of that would be an issue at all. I could just follow the sim and I wouldn't have to worry about what angle I need to shoot the little jet ski trick at. Also, there are plenty of times that I want the cinematic camera to move while the sim is walking. And that's also an issue because now I have to screw around and try to figure out what interval is the best at the same speed as the sim is walking. Now, another thing related to making videos would be screenshots. Now, when you take a screenshot, they end up in the screenshot folder. And those screenshots are named by the day, which is organized month, day, year. And this wasn't that big of a deal when I first got my computer. I could just scroll all the way down to the bottom and find my most recent screenshots. However, now that it's 2020 and it's been over a year since I got this computer, I can't do that anymore. Because these screenshots are sorted in alphabetical order, which is actually sorting my ASCII code, but I'm not going to get into all that right now. It's sorted by what month it was taken in instead of what year. And like I said, I've had this computer over a year. So I now have screenshots that have been taken on a certain date in both 2019 and 2020, meaning I have to actually go and look through my screenshots folder to find them. And no, I can't just delete them or put them in another folder because several of them are actually photos in The Sims houses. And if I get rid of that, they won't show up. A change I would like to have made is to have the year first in the file name like OBS does when it does screen recordings. That way I know that the latest one is at the very end and I don't have to look around in my folder of hundreds of screenshots to find the one I want. Now when it comes to The Sims, a lot of people play with different settings. Some people mute the stereo, some people mute the game as a whole and listen to other music. But for me personally, I have to have the in-game stereo on or else I go nuts. It's kind of this weird thing, because for as long as I can remember, as long as The Sims have had the in-game stereo on, I'm actually listening to the music they're listening to. And when it suddenly gets turned off, like when the stereo breaks, it really just drives me kind of nuts. But the most aggravating cause of this is when you have a Sim that has created their own music tracks and released them. Then, while you're listening to the radio, every once in a while, your Sim song will come on the radio. And that's lovely. That's great. I completely lose it if I heard one of my songs on the radio. But the problem is, as soon as that song's done, the radio doesn't come back on. It shuts off. So now, I actually have to manually go find the stereo and turn it back on only for this thing to happen again and again and again. This is why I normally don't have Sims use the music station. It would just really be nice if after the song was done, it started playing another song on the radio station that was on. That shouldn't really be that hard to do. I would know. I have a computer science degree. I know how to program things. And yeah, that may be an issue that doesn't bother a lot of people, but it really, really aggravates me, and it's something I would like to see fixed. And last, but certainly not least, how many times when I am filming have I gone to the lengths to set everything up? I have these sets built, I have these sims in place, I go around and I save point the cinematic camera in exactly the angles I want to be able to so that I can quickly move back and forth when different sims are talking. I start recording and then I hit play and the sim goes and sits down. If I had wanted you to sit, I would have told you to sit. And probably even more annoying is when your sims are already sitting down and talking, they get up in the middle of the conversation and move somewhere else. And because of this, I now have to waste more time. 
putting the sims back to where I want them, resetting up the camera, and trying it again. And most of the time, it won't work. There are lots of scenarios in my head that I just can't play out in The Sims because one person's sitting and one person's standing. And when I want them to do that, they won't do that. In fact, they'll only do that when I want them both to sit down. It is absolutely frustrating. And the only thing I can do to solve this is take the set that I carefully designed and delete all the chairs. I should not have to do this at all. Please, Sim Gurus, for the love of God, if you're watching this video, get rid of the musical chairs. If, there, if you can't do anything else that I've said here, please just fix that. That is the most annoying, frustrating part of trying to create. And it's just ugh, enough to want to rip my hair out. And so there you go. Those are 10 small quality of life improvements I would like to see in The Sims 4. What did you guys think of this list? Do you agree? Are there some things that I missed? Let me know with a comment. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate you leaving a like and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. You can also follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram at VisitJoan and Twitter at VisitJoanVideos. But that's gonna be it for today. So I'm gonna get up out of here. Bye everybody, I'll be seeing you in the next video.